Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more electricity next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Jefferson Pierce, also known as Black Lightning, a shockingly talented hero who's been lighting up the DC universe with an electric personality. Hopefully these puns aren't getting you charged up, I promise you'll at least get a high power build. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, lightning is fun, let's get a bunch of lightning. Next, we need to get defensive with some force fields to force attackers to feel bad. Finally, we need the power of flight. Getting around town is so much easier when you don't get stuck in traffic. But what if you don't wanna be slowed down by cookies when you're browsing the internet? Well, today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, has you covered. Surfshark is a virtual private network protecting your data from hackers, identity thieves, and even corporations. But Surfshark can also protect your computer from cookies that are slowing your browsing down. You're also protected from unwanted advertisements with the clean web feature blocking out pop-ups and even side banner ads that you don't want to see. So you're only seeing what you want to see on the internet. This guy. Of course, you can also use Surfshark servers in over 95 different countries to expand your browsing options on different streaming services. You no longer have to worry about region-blocked content. Surfshark VPN is offering Tulock subscribers a special deal, 83% off and three months free when you use offer code Tulock at checkout. So click the link in the description and improve your browsing today. Now, back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Start off with charisma. I went back and forth between this and intelligence since Black Lightning's origin story kind of changes. One version, he's born with powers. That seems to be the canon DC is going with right now, since that's what they did in the TV show. But the original run had a super-powered belt. We're gonna go charisma first. Intelligence next. Who needs to pick and choose between metahuman powers and super suits when the metahuman gets a super suit anyway? Strength after that, you went to the Olympic twice busy guy constitution at 12 bad guys hit hard there isn't a lightning class that has a big hit die other than i guess a storm barbarian but that's not really great and definitely not the right move for jefferson wisdom is a bit low your senses are bad but we don't need the rest of the skills and we'll dump dexterity because believe it or not the living bolt of lightning who calls himself black lightning isn't all that subtle origin stories are weird if you can't decide if you're a normal human or a metahuman just go variant human instead that'll give you a feat like elemental adept letting you ignore resistance distances to lightning damage and treat the ones you roll on damage die with lightning attacks as two specifically lightning spell attacks you can choose other elements but we're making black lightning cold isn't going to be our thing bump your strength and charisma with your two free points take perception for your skill of choice and build your own background for athletics and history proficiency call it the olympic principal background can you imagine going to a school where the principal was an olympic gold medalist and also a superhero speaking of super sorcerers are cool with two skills from the sorcerer list like persuasion and intimidation some people really like black lightning some people really don't the people who don't are villains though so it's fine storm sorcerers really like lightning and thunder damage i guess but we're gonna focus on lightning right away you get tempestuous magic letting you fly 10 feet after you cast a spell of first level or higher without provoking opportunity attacks eventually you won't be that squishy but right now you're rocking 8 hp blast people and run you can do that after casting a spell like witch bolt which is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage and keeps doing that damage over and over again for a minute depending on your concentration without having to re-roll the attack to keep the damage off so you can keep that up, shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction for a quick lightning force field. If you don't want to spend resources, enjoy cantrips like Shocking Grasp to deal 1d8 lightning damage to a creature and prevent them from taking reactions with a melee spell attack. It's also a great getaway plan. Lightning Lure is the opposite, forcing a strength saving throw on a creature, pulling them 10 feet closer to you and dealing 1d8 lightning damage to them if they land within 5 feet of you, which they should. The range is 15 feet. Light creates some light so you can see in the dark with your bad human eyes and Mage Hand lets you you lift objects weighing five pounds or less with a floating spectral hand. Reflavoring that as a little static kinesis type thing, pretty straightforward, and it should help you bring in the groceries. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points they can use to recover spell slots at the moment. More interesting stuff later. For this level spell, Absorb Elements lets you give yourself resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage as a reaction, and add an extra d6 of that damage to an attack next round. Lots of things using elemental damage resist their own damage type, but the real reason to use this spell is to cut the damage down. Think of it as Uncanny Dodge for elemental stuff only. Third level sorcerers get Meta Magic, a perfect ability for a meta human, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Careful spell lets you pick a number of creatures equal to your charisma modifier to automatically succeed on your saving throws. We don't have a big AoE spell just yet, but there's one coming soon. Heightened spell is the opposite, giving one creature disadvantage on a saving
saving throw against a spell you cast, which mixes with Elemental Adept to make sure you're hitting the baddies with the highest voltage. For this level spell, Hold Person forces a Wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Just pick them up with some lightning, and then enjoy the automatic failing of Dexterity saving throws. When we get a Dexterity saving throw spell eventually, four level sorcerers get an ability score improvement. Bump your Charisma first for more potent particles. Is lightning a particle? It's a particle effect on TV at least, so I'm not totally wrong even if I'm wrong. For this level spell, Levitate lets you lift an object weighing 500 pounds or less, or a person, though if that person doesn't want to go up, they can make a constitution saving throw to resist. On following turns, you can move the lifted thing 20 feet. It's good for mobility or, again, groceries. How do you think Black Lightning is so fit? Obviously, he does a lot of meal prep. Fifth level sorcerers can finally get Lightning Bolt, the first big damage option for a lightning-flavored caster. That forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 100-foot line, dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Hold person actually automatically makes a humanoid fail that saving throw, or you could use heightened spell, either or, however you want to do it. I believe in you. Six level storm sorcerers get heart of the storm, giving you resistance to thunder and lightning damage. You can also shoot off some lightning or thunder damage every time you cast a lightning or thunder spell of first level or higher to a creature within 10 feet of you. That damage is equal to half your sorcerer level. It's a little unstable, but it's very cool. For this level spell, fly gives a creature a flying speed of 60 feet for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Use it on yourself. Obviously, you're the one who's flying, but that restriction isn't in D&D. It's just a happy little buff that you could use if you don't mind me kicking in your door and spanking you for changing the builds. I would have gone evocation wizard. Okay, prepare your bottom for a hearty spanking. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells, and since we don't have the durability I want, go for stone skin, giving you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for up to an hour, depending on your concentration. We're going to get tougher in a second, though. This is a temporary measure. Eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. You can use it to cap off your charisma modifier, get the highest voltage going on all your lightning. For this level spell, let's bounce back to the first level for catapult, which forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 3d8 bludgeoning damage, letting you grab something with lightning and toss it at someone. Is it a good spell at this level? Uh, no. Is it funny? Kind of. Now, if you prefer the suited up version of Black Lightning, I guess we can go grab something for that now, especially since even the metahuman Black Lightning gets a super suit. For your super suit, go Artificer, starting you off with magical tinkering, letting you do tiny magical things to tiny non-magical items, lights, messages, static effects with actual static. You also get two more cantrips and spells. Spare the Dying stabilizes a creature at zero HP so they don't have to roll death saving throws. Your hands are defibrillators, so that checks out. Message lets you whisper a message to a creature within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back for some super impressive superpowers of uh, sending a text. For some electric regeneration, Cure Wounds lets you heal 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier to a creature you touch as an action. Obviously, this is regeneration when you touch yourself. Long Strider increases a creature's movement speed by 10 feet, and since it's not concentration, you can use it to make yourself fly a little bit faster than anyone else. Second level artificers get infusion, special inventions to make you cooler than the other lightning heroes. Enhanced arcane focus adds one to the attack rolls with a spell casting focus, and you can ignore up to half cover, making Witch Bolt more accurate, which is good. If it misses, you just wasted a slot. Goggles of Nightly you see in the dark with your bad human eyes, but without a big flashlight from the light cantrip. Enhanced defense adds one to the AC of a set of armor or a shield. Go for armor. We'll get that suit very soon, I promise. And enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon, also important later. Because third level of artificer, you can choose a specialty like armorer. That'll give you proficiency with heavy armor. You can wear the heaviest armor without penalty if you don't meet the strength score. I could describe what that penalty is, but I don't have to because, you know, you get to ignore it. You can also choose between two different armor models. Both work for black lightning. Both get special weapons that use your intelligence modifier instead of your strength or dexterity. For the infiltrator, that's a lightning launcher, letting you shoot a ranged weapon attack that deals 1d6 lightning damage with the ability to do 2d6 once per round. The guardian get thunder gauntlets, weapons that make a melee weapon attack that deals 1d8 thunder damage on a hit and gives the target disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures who aren't you. That also covers black lightning's hand-to-hand -hand skills. There's definitely some extra oomph on his punches, but in addition to fighting options, there's also other things. The guardian armor can also give themselves temporary HP equal to your artificer level as a bonus action and amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. It's another defensive field. The infiltrator is five feet faster and you can ignore the stealth penalty of heavy armor, but your armor lights up, so I don't know how stealthy it's going to be anyway. I would actually probably lean towards the guardian. It gets you more things the black lightning doesn't have from sorcerer and cantrips are probably going to be better than attacking for lightning damage anyway. For the artificers get another ability score improvement. Start working on your intelligence modifier for your artificer stuff. Thankfully, we don't really need strength for the armor anymore. That at least cuts down on the multi-ability dependence issue with multi-classing two casters. Fifth level armors get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one, making punch
punching one of your better cantrips. Actually, Chalk and Grasp is really good. Don't worry, the armor still makes this multi-class really good anyway. You also get Heat Metal, letting you heat up a metal object, dealing 2d8 fire damage to a creature who's touching it. They can make a constitution saving throw on their turn. If they fail, they have to drop it, and if they succeed, they get to keep holding it, but they have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, and you can deal another 2d8 fire damage every round. They're holding it as a bonus action. I know Black Lightning is uh, generally going to use Lightning more, but Lightning is hot, and so is Black Lightning, just being honest here. Six level Artificers get tool expertise to double your proficiency bonus with skills you're proficient with, including Smiths, Tinkerers, and Thieves. There was an episode where Black Lightning picks a lock with Lightning, which is how come on i'm down for it but come on you also get two more infusions armor of magical strength recharges one d6 charges at dawn and you can use it to add your intelligence modifier to a strength check or to avoid being knocked prone i still do want you to have more strength than we have we just need other stuff more spell refueling ring lets you recover one spell of third level or lower once per day basically just giving you an extra third level slot for one more lightning bolt seven level artificers get flash of genius letting you add your intelligence modifier to the ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you an amount of times per day you to your intelligence modifier feel free to give it to a buddy or just use it to make all of your checks consistent jefferson's a pretty well-rounded guy eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement bump your intelligence for more flashes of genius i imagine that would make you a great educator it would also be great for superheroes but we've built a lot of superheroes we could use a few teachers we're gonna round this off with some more sorcerer levels since that'll give us bigger spells ninth level sorcerers get fifth level spells hold monster is like hold person but without the humanoid restriction it also pairs really well with your armor or weapons since attacks made within five feet of a target that's paired paralyzed are all critical hits. 10th level sorcerers get another meta magic option, like Empowered Spell, letting you re-roll a number of damage die on a spell equal to your Charisma modifier. Between this and Elemental Adept, your lightning is going to be consistently high voltage. For this level spell, Skill Empowerment gives a creature expertise in a skill they already have proficiency with, another way to make your strength super, even if your strength score is only okay. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells, Chain Lightning forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature within 150 feet of you, and 4 creatures within 30 feet of them dealing 10 d8 lightning damage to those that fail half as much to those that succeed it's the ultimate lightning spell unless you count draconic transformation which i thought about getting but then we'd miss out on an ability score improvement and we need those pretty badly our capstone's the 12th level of sorcerer for one last ability score improvement see so you can cap off your intelligence modifier that's going to help with your strength checks sometimes with the armor of magical strength and any check with flashes of genius now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you have multiple abilities that can turn your lightning into some of the most consistent damage we've ever built and cantrips, spells, and weapons that all deal your favorite type of damage. You're also much bulkier than most casters, with enhanced defense giving you 19 AC and a shield spell pumping that up to 24. Shield was actually on the armorer spell list in Unearthed Arcana. They took it away because it seemed too busted. We just did it anyway. Finally, flying is one of the best mobility options in the game. Nothing will ever be out of reach, and you can just hover above everyone and throw down lightning with your launchers. For weaknesses, even though you can keep the damage off, you're not great at taking it, with around 110 HP depending on how you roll. You're also not very subtle with dump dexterity and flashy powers that might make stealth checks difficult. Finally, lightning is rad, but it's the only type of damage you're using, and there are enemies that are fully immune. You're gonna have trouble doing much anything to them. So yeah, I definitely recommend using the thunder gauntlets to mix the damage up, fly around, shock people, and enjoy that big casting AC. Just watch out for more heavy-duty foes. They could give you a whale of a time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak Mango for more Tulak fun.